Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. We are learning the chapter Organisms and Populations. Today we are going to learn different types of growth patterns. We started with population and population is not static or it is uh, not constant. It keeps on increasing or it decreases sometimes because new members are added up by birth, many deaths occur in the population. So population of a particular region is actually influenced by the availability of food resource, then the predator pressure of that area and the climatic conditions or the weather conditions. So these are all parameters affecting the growth of a population. So there are four basic processes that influence the population of a given habitat at a particular period of time. The first one is natality, then mortality, then birth rate and death rate. Population density in a given habitat fluctuates due to four main factors. The first one is called a natality or the birth rate in that population. Second is mortality or the death rate. Then comes immigration and then emigration. Immigration means the organisms which are coming or joining the population from another habitat whereas emigration means the, the organisms which are leaving the population during that time we are considering. Okay, so of this we know that a birth rate is always adding or increasing the population the same way immigration is also adding to the population. Whereas uh, mortality or the death rate and immigration are actually decreasing the size of the population or reducing the number from the total population. Suppose present uh, population is considered as population density we represent by the letter N. So NT means population density at time T, maybe now at present, what is it? So um, if you want to find out NT plus 1, maybe now it is NT. NT is the population density at time T, that is present time, if it is NT, then uh, after one year, that is NT plus 1, how will we find out? The present population what we have that number plus the total of birth rate and immigration minus death rate and immigration. These two are plus, these two are minus, right? So sum of this minus sum of this. So we naturally know if birth and immigrations are more in a population, definitely then it will be increasing. This difference will be uh, positive, right? So that will be increasing the population. Whereas these two are high means it is decreasing the population. But when we are considering a population at any time like this, uh, normal existing population under consideration, uh, of this immigration and immigration are not playing a very significant role. There is not much immigration and immigration happening there. In such case, we are considering only birth rate and a death rate which are significantly contributing to the population density. Then when do we consider the immigration and immigration? It is at a very peculiar situation. For example, when a new colony is forming. During that time, more than birth, what is adding to the population? Immigration is adding to the population. So whenever a new colonization is happening, that time only these two are considered. Otherwise, normally we take only birth rate and death, death rate in an occurring population. Now let us discuss two types of growth forms. So first type is called a exponential growth form and the second type is called a logistic growth curve or logistic growth form. So when we plot population density in the y-axis and uh, uh, the, the time and the x-axis, we get a j-shaped curve if the population growth is exponential. Whereas if it is logistic, we get a sigmoid curve. So let us discuss exponential growth first. Exponential means uh, x to the power of n, right? x into x into x into x. We know that. So it is increasing or it is becoming a huge number. So according to this theory, if the ideal conditions are available, every organism can reproduce to its maximum. So the ability of the organisms to reproduce uh, well, that is called a biotic potential. So uh, if there is a lot of resources available, because we learn resources are limiting the growth of the organism. So, but if resources are plenty and there is no predation pressure, then the a growth can be maximum. So even if a slowly reproducing organism like um, an, an elephant can reproduce to its maximum if these conditions are there. But these are ideal conditions which are not actually existing. Why? Because there is an environmental resistance. Environment cannot support the unlimited growth of organisms. 
okay so the en environmental resistance will uh, hinder the growth of like, or exponential growth of any organism so we can say that it is happening only in very rare situations or in hypothetical situations or we are creating a, an ideal condition to this to happen whereas the more realistic type is the logistic growth so let us consider this in detail. In exponential growth, we consider the birth rate and a death rate. Whenever we talk about birth rate and death rate, it's not the total number we are talking about, but we are talking about per capita birth and per capita death. Per capita means what? Per head, what is the number? That is what we calculated in the previous video I showed you, how to calculate the per capita death and the per capita uh, uh, birth. Okay. So, uh, here, if you are considering population density as n, so difference in population density over a time period, that is difference in density by difference in time, that is d, d n by dt. So, what is it? The difference between birth rate and death rate. We know birth rate is more and death rate is less, that is a positive value, into the present density. So, that is the way we are finding out the population exponential growth. So, that B minus D, birth rate minus death rate can be considered as R. So, if you replace B minus D as R, we get the equation R into N. R is called the intrinsic rate of natural increase or that is nothing but the biotic potential, ability of organisms to reproduce. So, that shows the increase. So, if you discuss different values of this um, R value, we can say whether the population is increasing or population is decreasing or also we can find out the influence of various abiotic factors on the birth rate and death rate of that particular population. When we discuss the value of R for different populations, we know how the population is different. For example, in Norway rat, the R value is 0 0.015, whereas in the flower beetle, it is 0 0.12, so it is more, right? Uh, in 1981, uh, human uh, R value for in India, in India it was 0 0.0205. So, if you find out the recent one, that is after 2011 census, if you take, uh, you should know birth rate and uh, per capita birth and per capita death, we can calculate that. If we calculate that accurately, we know whether population is increasing or decreasing. Suppose if the R value is more than this, we know that population is increasing. If the R value is less, population density is decreasing. And we know exponential value is a very high value or it is a rapid growth. So, to consider this huge number, we are using the form of calculus. We are making use of integral form of calculus. That is, uh, we are plotting it against in this graph. So, if you take the integral form, we get a formula like this that is J-shaped curve that we are obtaining. So initially it is like a kind of lag phase, then it is going to a log or exponential phase, high rate. So NT, that is population density after time T. After a particular time, if you want to find out according to this, the formula is N0, that is the population density at time 0 at present, then E, E is the base of natural logarithm. We are finding out in the logarithmic scale because it is a huge number. That value is 2.71828 and to the power of RT. R is the R value we know, intrinsic rate and T is the time in which we have to consider the population growth. So this is how we are finding it out. But as we mentioned, it is an ideal uh, situation. Okay, for this to happen, the resource should be unlimited. But is there unlimited resource in this nature available? No. Because environment has got its own parameters to check the growth of population. So environment has a carrying capacity that will limit the growth. So this is only an ideal kind of uh, growth curve but the realistic one is the logistic growth curve. Now considering the logistic growth curve which is the realistic curve. So when you plot that logistic growth population we get an S shaped curve and that is called a Verhurst Pearl logistic curve. So in this curve we have initially a lag phase then an exponential phase then again a stationary phase is coming. So why is it coming to this end? Because beyond this level the environment is not able to support the population growth. So this is called a K. K means the carrying capacity of the nature. Carrying capacity means the ability of the nature or the limit of the nature 
to provide the resources for that existing population. That's never unlimited. There is a level up to that it can support. Beyond that, resources are not available. Okay, so when the up, up to what K is available, population will grow. After that, it will come to a stationary level. So if you consider now the equation, considering the carrying capacity, the difference in population density over a time period T is R, again rate of increase, biotic potential into N, the current population density into K minus N, carrying capacity minus the population density upon carrying capacity. So carrying capacity, I told it is the ability of the nature to provide resources for the existing population, right? And if you take this entire thing K minus N upon K, that is actually the environmental resistance. So, whenever biotic potential uh, we are considering, biotic potential is the ability to reproduce. It increases in a population. The environmental resistance is always decreasing the population growth. So, this is more uh, realistic growth curve. So, this uh, difference that we are seeing here is actually the environmental resistance. So, uh, this part is very important. You will get questions uh, regarding uh, the graph, the shape of the graph and uh, which is more realistic, such questions. So, please learn well this part for your examination. Hope you understood this concept well. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe to my channel, Biology My Passion.